David Weston, the host of Wall Street Week. Coming by today with a conversation I'm very uh, in tune with right now, and this is on congestion pricing, particularly here in New York, a way to, I guess, ease the traffic in New York, but that means a lot of restrictions for folks who do want to drive. And for those of us who live in New York, yeah. everybody is talking yeah. about this. Unfortunately, yeah. we have the best expert <laughs> in the world on New York congestion <laughs> pricing, although I don't think she likes the name of it. She is no. Jeanette Sadiq Khan. She advises mayors around the world on transportation policy as part of Bloomberg Associates. That's the philanthropic consulting arm of Michael Bloomberg's charitable organization. That is Bloomberg Philanthropies. So, Jeanette, thanks so much for being here. Pleasure to be here with you, David. This is not the first time we've seen this play. Uh, no. 16 years ago, when you you were the, the transportation commissioner for Mayor Mike Bloomberg, our Mike Bloomberg. You tried to get it through. It didn't happen. So what's different this time? Is it going to happen this time? I believe it is going to happen this time. Sixteen years ago, we had a majority of the New York editorial boards in support of that, which is kind of amazing to think about New York editorial boards all being in favor of this uh, plan, a, a majority of New Yorkers behind it. And it passed the city council and was up in Albany for a vote, and then it was uh, unceremoniously sidelined and never even came up for a vote. And 16 years later, um, we're in very different position in the sense that we now actually have a city that has bike lanes and bus lanes and pedestrian walkways. Um, but some things are the same. You know, we have chronic congestion. You know, it's difficult to get around town. And really, the secret of New York City's success and what it was founded on was its transit system. Mm. And so this is a once-in-a-generation opportunity to actually bring the resources needed to continue the investment in our subway and bus system. So for those uh, who are not actually in New York City, as I understand it, it's basically south of 60th Street. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to pay a fairly substantial fine mm -hmm. or, or fee to get south of it. What's the pot of gold you're after here? I mean, in success, how does this benefit New York and its citizens? Well, first of all, only most of the people in New York City get around by subways and buses and uh, walking. So 75% of people getting around uh, don't drive. And so this benefits all of those riders. The two million people that come into New York City mm -hmm. by subway and bus, they're the real beneficiaries. The residents of New Jersey, only 1.6% come in by driving. Mm -hmm. and. The vast majority, so 98% of the people that are coming in from New Jersey benefit by better transit, mm -hmm. by uh, easier ways of getting around the city. But has, so that, has that been articulated, though? I mean, we still mm -hmm. are hearing <laughs> opposition from the governor of New Jersey, even from other jurisdictions within New York, so, such as like the Staten Island president and the Bronx borough president, a lot of folks who have basically said this is going to be a hardship for some of their residents. You know, it's such a good yeah. point, because I do think when you think about the words congestion pricing, mm -hmm. you have two very negative <laughs> words, congestion and pricing, tied together in this one little phrase, mm -hmm. which doesn't sound like anybody would want it. It mm -hmm. sounds like a tax on your sinus condition, right? Yeah. So the idea that it's going to make it easier for people to get around, that we've got a street dividend. We can make our streets safer, easier, more enjoyable, mm -hmm. better for shopping, better yeah. for the economy. We need to articulate that in a more effective way. And we can build wider lanes for people to bike. We can build yeah. many more uh, fast bus lines. Right. We can make it greener for people to walk around the city. We could pedestrianize lower Manhattan. All sorts of possibilities that are hidden in plain sight that yeah. we can do. I think most rational people agree with that, at least with the idea of it, the theory. And we know on paper it probably makes sense. And we've had examples of this being rolled out. Obviously, the city of London, probably one of the more successful examples of this. But it's one thing to have this on paper as an idea and one thing to actually implement it. Because like you said, it isn't just about putting up the toll lanes. It's right. also about making sure the transit system is running on time and it's safe and people want to use it or bike bike lanes are safe and people want to use it as well. No, absolutely. And when you think about it, you know, you think about it's really about paying your fair share in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Like every time you take the subway to come into Manhattan, you pay a three dollar uh, fare. Mm -hmm. If you're driving into the central business district, you pay nothing. Mm -hmm. So it's really about fairness, really, and setting it up in a way so that that we are actually doubling down on the very systems that make our city so strong. 8% of the GDP for this country comes from here. You know, we're not going to continue to make those kinds of returns on investment by triple decking our streets, mm -hmm. right? We already, you already know, walking around the city, 
just how congested it is. Yeah. So we're going to lower the congestion. We're going to improve transit service. We're going to uh, lower uh, pollution. It's really win, win, win. But are we ready? I want to pick up on what Romaine said about the public transit system, because uh, some of us take the subway fairly regularly. It'll get you there. It's very efficient. It's not the most pleasant thing in the world. When you compare it, for example, with London, it's very different from the London uh, underground. As a fact, when are we going to get our subway system upgraded to the level of sort of a London? Well, the, a billion dollars a year will be generated and dedicated to the MTA. And so that's basically what we're looking to do. I do think that there's more that can be done in the run-up uh, to sorry, congestion just, pricing. Sorry, just to be clear, so it's a lot of the money that's coming from those tolls, that will go towards MTA. It's the, dedicated the to system. the MTA, okay. yeah. And the mayor can't take it for the things like it. it's needs, a such as the migrants that are coming in. He's not going to take that and take Cannot. care of the migrants? And actually, that's a really important point, because mm -hmm. we've been around that block before where money that was supposed to go for something mm -hmm. was, you know, diverted for something else. This money is dedicated to the MTA and will go to the MTA. Mm -hmm. And I think when you take a look at London's example, for example, you know, you saw when London implemented their congestion pricing program, they saw a 30 percent increase on ridership on their buses and they saw a dramatic decrease in congestion in the central business district. We are likely to see the same. We've seen this uh, play out other places. We've mentioned London already, some other places. You're working on some furniture places. Has it ever not worked so well? Mm -hmm. Can we learn from that experience where it might not go right and we need to anticipate that? We have not seen an example where a city has rolled back on their congestion pricing program. In fact, they've expanded it, and that's what London's looking to do. That's what happened in Singapore. That's being expanded in Milan. Uh, Copenhagen, uh, you just, Oslo, you take a look at the cities that have implemented it, and they're all moving forward. So mm -hmm. I think it's a pretty good sign. And, you know, these are, you know, obviously somewhat treacherous yeah. waters when you start out, right? <laughs> Anything new yeah. is always, yeah. you know, there's always pushback. When we rolled out City Bike, people were like, there's going to be blood on the streets. Yeah, when I we that. pedestrianized <laughs> and Times I was like, Square. Okay. <laughs> Particularly because in so many other U.S. cities that already implemented <laughs> bike shares. But, the, but there, another issue, though, too, is this idea of spillover, right? If you can't go below 60th Street, there's this idea here that people will drive to, like, yeah. 61st and Park. Uh, and park on, on you know, basically yeah. in those neighborhoods, taking up spaces or creating congestion there just outside of this zone. Yeah, well, there's not very much yeah. parking there now. I think <laughs> yeah. people well, will learn true. in pretty pretty <laughs> short order that that doesn't yeah. work. Yeah. And New Yorkers are savvy, yeah. you know? They, they like to find the fastest, yeah. easiest way to get around. Mm. And we've got the richest network of transit mm. in this area. Yeah. And so it just makes common sense, you know, to double down on this investment.